What's new at Tornado Alley Turbos? A couple things this year. We brought our turbo normalized B58 Baron to Oshkosh. We have it parked over at the Bonanzas to Oshkosh tent. It's the first time we brought it here. It's been a project uh, long underway. It's a project actually that Tornado Alley Turbo started 10 years ago, but had to put it aside, particularly when the Cirrus opportunity came along. We got very busy doing turbo normalized Cirruses. But we got back to the Baron project uh, about 18 months ago. It's looking really good. We're not through tweaking on it, but we're getting some very nice performance numbers on it. Our STC project will cover the CDE58 and B58 models, mm -hmm. so 520 and 550 powered. The system we have has a single turbo, two intercoolers, automatic wastegate, and uh, soon to come we'll have our density controller, which is our electronically controlled wastegate. Now what's the status on that project? For those of us in the Cirrus community, boy, you've just been teasing the blazes out of us. Yeah, I know. I apologize for that. Uh, but uh, the weight's going to be worth it. I, I absolutely believe that. The density controller is doing good. We have it flying in the Cirrus currently, working hard on the final electronic configuration. The certification's moving forward. We're doing the DO160 environmental exposure testing on that now. I hope we can drag that thing out for the Cirruses before the end of the year, mm -hmm. and then for our other turbo-normalized airplanes, sometimes next year, and for turbocharged airplanes in general thereafter. So it's going to be really something. The DFC-90 all-digital attitude-based autopilot delivers significant performance and safety improvements over previous generation systems. Its innovative flight envelope protection guards against autopilot-induced stalls, and the straight and level mode provides one-button recovery from unusual attitudes for an added measure of safety. Immensely popular within the Cirrus community, the DFC-90 is now being made available for a growing list of aircraft including Piper Matrix and Mirage, Cessna 182s, and Beach Bonanzas and Barons. Fly with confidence. Fly with DFC-90. Well, in this state, what is that going to do for our airplanes? Well, the density controller does a number of things. Uh, first, it's an electronically controlled wastegate, so there's an electric servo motor on the wastegate itself. It's controlled by a smart electronic box that's looking at a number of engine operating functions, manifold pressure, fuel flow, induction air temperature, cylinder head temperature, etc. And then recognizing uh, that both normally aspirated engines as well as turbocharged and turbo normalized engines lose the ability to develop rated power as the air temperature increases this compensates for those turbo engines by giving you available additional manifold pressure letting the airplanes make sea level standard day performance even on 100 degree days beyond that it has a special feature that we call world peace which beyond that uh, gives you the ability to have higher manifold pressure under an appropriate set of operating conditions when the engine is being run lean of peak. So uh, lean of peak climbs become much more practical, much more available depending on outside air conditions, having a little more manifold pressure available to be able to uh, add fuel flow and cruise at higher power with nice control of cylinder head temperatures it really opens up a whole new uh, paradigm of operating parameters. Sounds like quite a bit on the plate, but is that all? Well, no, it's not. Um, we have a couple other turbo projects underway that uh, I'm not going to talk about, but uh, our electronic ignition, PRISM, is working well, but still waiting on the answer to the question, what octane fuel are we going to be left with? And we've certainly been doing a lot of work on the unleaded fuel thing, we know that the PRISM electronic ignition will buy us oh, about five octane points of performance, but exactly uh, where we're going to land on that and where we're going to end up in terms of operating the engines on PRISM, we don't yet know. But uh, we're trying hard to get our G100UL fuel approved. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. 
Now, in the meantime, though, there's a number of aircraft that you already have a series of mods for. Just let's do a quick review, because uh, obviously the Cirrus uh, comes to mind for me. I'm pushing 1,000 uh, hours now on my uh, Cirrus G3 Turbo, and outside of one mag, it's the only time it's ever stopped anywhere, anytime, anyhow, and I got a feeling it was my fault anyway. But uh, there's a number of aircraft that uh, you're modding. As a matter of fact, I've got a friend of mine who's looking at you for his A36, and the one that I'm actually kind of curious about for another friend is the Cardinal. We inherited the Cardinal STC in about uh, the year 2000 from Flightcraft Turbo. At the time, that turbo system didn't have an intercooler in it. It was something that we had always wanted to do. Uh, so about a year ago, we were able to do a pretty full re-engineering of that system and incorporate an intercooler into it. So we're really much more enthralled with that system ourselves. So it does make a very nice airframe engine combination. As a matter of fact, we have an experimental IO390 powered Cardinal with our turbo system on it flying right now in ADA and should wrap that up soon. So we found that a lot of Cardinal owners that are considering the turbo are also considering putting in that IO390 engine. And so we figured we'd go ahead and add that to the scope of engines. Of course, we also do Bonanzas from S models on through G36s. And we have about 700 turbo normalized Bonanzas flying today. We do Cessna 185s. We actually have an STC for 182s, but that's not currently in production. And uh, like I said, have a couple more under development. Sounds like you guys stay busy. Well, absolutely. Uh, we haven't, we're having fun. Uh, we're fortunate to be in an industry where we can make a difference and we get lots of kudos for that. And we're, we uh, just wrapped up on fixing the fleet of T-34s with a, a spar modification. They're back in aerobatic condition and have a pretty good showing here. We brought one ourselves and uh, we're glad to see that project over with. Outstanding. Tim Rail from Tornado Alley Turbo, thanks for talking to Aero News and Aero TV. We appreciate it. Thanks, Jim. Nice to see you.